Do you want to sing the intro? Me? Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay. That was worth a shot. Okay. Do you want to do it? Uh, yes. No curses, right? Yeah. All right. Wait, what the hell's wrong with you? When do we curse in the intro? My balls oh, are constantly... Uh, oh, you can say your balls. You can? Yeah. Okay. They would have told me I can't say balls. Right? That'd be ridiculous if I'm just saying balls on <laughs> and that's getting flagged and that's the intro of every show. Just that start would be saying bad. I'm bald and totally moving. Gotcha. Three, two... He's bald and totally moving, new and improving, knock out and get back up. He's got the heart of a liger, his tummy's on fire, ready to take us all the way to the top. Welcome to the show, did you know that your mom is up? Terrific caregiver who nursed you with her teats. That's very nice. All hail the king of the West. 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 That was pretty good. Oof. I was dodging potholes left and right there. Yeah. Really? You did good. It was great. Yeah. Uh, you never know when you're going to be called upon to be a front man. I feel like Mark Wahlberg and Rockstar. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if I had a saying it, that it was going to make me dizzy and then I was going to get panicky. I feel like it's hard to breathe. <laughs> Does anybody else taste the smell toast burning? <laughs> I think I'm going out. Welcome to the show, Big J Orkison. Yes, buddy. What's up? Thank you. Very happy to have you here. Uh, if you don't know Big J, I don't know what happened to you, but uh, yeah, he's one of the greatest comedians alive, and uh, he lets me do stand up all the time. And every single time I do stand up with you, it's the best crowd, and it <laughs> makes me feel like maybe I am funny and I can do it. You already and can. And then I go to this other place and I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, no, nah, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's, yeah. <laughs> that is a funny change. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's the difference between getting somebody who's like already into, like, for lack of a better word, the genre of yeah. what we do. Yeah. And, uh, and like, they're all there in one place. When you get to, when I go up, you know, come watch me do just the OR at the comedy store on like a Tuesday. Yeah. And my first few minutes are definitely like pulling teeth. Yeah. Because they're, yeah. They're not that good. Yeah, you can kind of, like, I feel like as soon as I come out, I'm not, especially, like, the other day, you, I came to see you, and you were like, hey, do you want to do a set? And I was like, oh, yeah. okay. I so I definitely wasn't ready, and I got nervous again because um, I can tell everybody's ready to laugh. Like, you kind of get away with it. Like, at the start, I was like, hey, everybody. And it's like, oh, I'm like, I didn't even say anything yet. Just excited for you to be there, yeah. But it makes it feel easier, like when you said pulling teeth. It's not the ultimate way to start. You know, it'd be better if it was like, oh, look at everybody's come, come to laugh. This is going to be fun. That's, That's just comedy's not that anymore. Like, comedy's definitely people in the audience are coming to be like, let's see if they go too far tonight. Like, they're not there just to like, let's laugh and have a good time. Yeah. It's, you know, you have to assume, a, I think, a large, not a large, but a percentage of the people who follow you are looking at your stuff every day to see what they're going to get mad at. Wow. Tell it tell on you for saying the, the F word on YouTube. Like that's it's crazy. Yeah. Like they're there to be upset and people go to comedy clubs to be appalled. It's very do, bizarre. Do you ever meet these people like before or after the show? What sort of Sure. What sort of take do you <laughs> have on that sort of like outside of that being a weird, inexplicable right. hobby of theirs? What kind of miserable people do you think they are in other parts of their lives? Oh, across they're they're in a bubble. They're in a bubble of like everything should be bending towards like the way I want it. It's uh, I waited, not I waited. I was doing a meet and greet after a show. In like middle of the, like Bellevue, Washington State, it was a club called Parlor Live. It was great, and afterwards they make you do a meet and greet, official. So you stand there and everybody waits in line. So you see this line, and there was a lady. It always bums me out too when age hasn't changed. You know, when you were a kid and you thought people who were older just kind of like were smart and. Wouldn't say anything contradictory or ridiculous. Uh, yeah. And this older, like, 
to almost like a hippie lady, waited in line for like 25, 30 minutes, waiting behind people who were like, I love this stuff, or, yeah. I, or, or I never heard of you, and this was great, <laughs> and taking pictures and everything. And then she waits in line to go, she goes, I think you're like funny. Like you're a funny guy, but like your subjects, like there's so much to talk about in the world. Like, and you're talking about the things you're going on. And I go, yeah, no, I was like, well, I, I know I go, I'm not for everybody. I know it's like dirty and whatever, but um, I, I said to her, I go, Gary Goldman, who's a great comic, yeah. squeaky clean for the most part. I go, Gary Goldman's like a squeaky clean comic. And like, he's literally, he's playing at like Tacoma Comedy Club. I'm like, you should see, he's like hilarious and like squeaky clean. It's more like what you're looking for. I go, I, I understand. I'm not mad at her for being it's too dirty for her. I go, yeah, but there is a great comic in town who's like super clean, I'd recommend. And she goes, but I like coming here. And uh -huh. argue, I go, are you, did you wait in line for a half hour from people telling me how much fun they had to tell me that I should change everything that I do, change the way I do it yeah. to suit clearly in this scenario, it looks like only you. Did she say and she's yes? Like, yeah. <laughs> I I respect their honesty. Yeah, for sure. But it what yeah, it's a weird a lot of like, effort, right? Yeah, it's like I don't like rom coms. I've never stood up and been like, "Why are they making these?" I'm <laughs> yeah. like, oh, "It's just probably not for me. I'm not the audience." Well, you are here yeah, because that person seems like this is not the last time that she will spend a, a a considerable amount of time to line up to tell somebody that they suck. Yeah, it's really crazy. Yeah. Just, just move, how about just move on? It does make it feel better knowing that there's a group of people out there that are just there to be triggered because oh. i i feel like sometimes when people do get bummed out you're like ah oh. you know i you know i mean what did i say i'm not trying to offend people i was trying to make you laugh and you're now you're mad at me well my, it must be my fault but then when you hear that well i believe more it's not that they're actually triggered i think they're listening for things that will trigger people and bringing that to the surface to be like, look at what a terrible person this is. And look what I've done by exposing and bringing this guy to the light. Yeah. There's that. And there's but just like, day. there's like the <laughs> addiction to outrage. Yeah. They, they love having their buttons pushed. Can you imagine, like even just imagine the most inappropriate comedian, whatever that means to you, like going to a show and just being like, this is terrible. This person needs to be stopped. You would still, what would you do? You'd get up and leave. Yeah, just go. It's not my thing. <laughs> Be smart. Don't start. Kick the habit. Put it out before it puts you out. All phrases we've heard a hundred times, yet we still continue to have bad habits. Bad habits can be hard to kick. Our sponsor, Foom, is on a mission to accelerate humanity's breakup from the bad habits that consume far too many of us. Foom is a natural diffusive device that uses plants and behavioral science to help you trade out your negative habit for a positive one. Fume is not a vape. It's a non-electronic device designed to transform your negative habits. Instead of pods filled with potentially harmful chemicals like a vape, Foom uses cores infused with plants like peppermint and cinnamon for delicious natural flavors. Head to tryfume.com and use the code Jason to save 10% off when you get your journey pack today. The journey pack comes with three unique flavors and the new version two fume to help kickstart your positive habits. T-R-Y-F-U-M dot com. Use the code Jason to save 10% off your order today, man. Oh, I never yeah. felt the need to like yell to the world or at least even if you were broadcaster. So if you say it to the, I've always said, uh, Smashing Pumpkins live. As much as I love the Smashing Pumpkins, they're the worst live band I've ever really? seen. Really? He just doesn't care. He doesn't like doing it. it have you seen like. it more than once? Because yeah. they could have bad days. So yeah, yeah. you know. And many years apart. The first show I saw, he apologized at the end of the show. Like he knew it wasn't a good one. Oh, wow. Did he, he say why? He speeds up the songs. He seems to have contempt for the audience. Yeah. Like I can what it see appears that. like. That said, I love Smash. I think they're, I think he's a genius. I think the music's yeah. brilliant, but it's not good. I will, I will go on the radio and be like, when to see Smashing Pumpkins? I was like, not a good show. So I know there is an element of that that, like, I guess it's shitty if he heard that for some reason. But I certainly would never DM Billy Corgan. Like, you know, I love the Smashing Pumpkins, and you sped through the songs. Like, yeah. what's your problem? I'm like, 
he let him do his thing. It's just like I just didn't love the show. Yeah. Like it's it's I'm just telling my thing. Billy Corgan's the best. <laughs> like don't yeah, worry about me. It's, I saw Danzig once, and I've seen Danzig a lot, and he's been great several times. But one time, you know, he looked a little puffy. <laughs> Like a lot more puffy than usual. It says I, the demon horns in the belt are poking the, his gut. No, it's it was it was folded out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it wasn't the logo. It was was it would, instead of seeing the logo, out. it's it pointing was, out. Yeah, the horns were pointing out because the gut was folding it. <laughs> and I was like, why wear that belt if it's gonna get pushed like yeah, that? Relax. You didn't want a rodeo. Put on a smaller belt. Yeah, belt yeah. Or, or like a I don't know a vest. I don't know what you would do. But although there is, if you there. Is something to be said though staying the same or changing like in danzig like if he just changed it all and wasn't wearing the demon thing like he does that at this point for the audience yeah yeah good point he's like they want to see the uh belt yeah. he knows it doesn't because the other thing is like marilyn manson what a fan i was of him for so long me too and still am of the music um yeah. uh and i thought he was great and when he got older now it's not that he got older it's that he got older and now he wears like a, a t shirt and a vest on stage and he's still squeezing into like yeah. leather pants. But the, and he's again, he's not fat. Fat would be the wrong description for him. Really? Uh, I'm sure there's elements where he gets he just, at this point. He's not thin at all. Right. He's just kind of like sloppy. And, <laughs> and he just, and the way, even like from seeing when he's young, like he knew how to like slither almost yeah, around yeah. the stage. Sebastian Bach, same thing when you're slithered around the stage and yeah. looked like a rock star. And now Marilyn Manson, the last time I saw him, it like he looks like clunky, like he's like yeah. thumping around the stage and yeah. barely singing the songs and yeah. laying tired. on the ground. Yeah. They Marilyn Manson and I took Christine and took my girlfriend a, uh, a couple times to see him, but past his prime right. by the time she got to see him. And one of them was a uh, Chicago Open Air Festival. And I think that was the first time she was going to see him with me. And I was so excited. I'm like, this is going to be an experience for yeah. you. I'm like, he's the best and he came out and he did i made the opening of my special i think i may have told you this before I, I did the uh i did the opening of my comedy central special based off of a performance that he does of his song Annie Christ superstar which is inspired by that yeah. and it's my favorite it's when he comes out and they drop the banners it looks like a like a nazi rally yeah, and he's yeah. on the podium doing like the parody yeah, of yeah. and that was always the cool he was always you know, wearing a corset and skinny, and he'd be saluting and yeah. falling over. It just looked cool, like in his like weird rock starness. At open air festival, he's got the shirt, the vest on. The song starts. He's at the podium doing this. They have him. They're shooting the poor guy from directly up his oh, the eight chins. Yeah. <laughs> and he always did Marilyn Manson of the years too. I've watched this guy do gross stuff on stage, but because he's Manson, you're like. It's awesome. I've watched him just piss his pants and like he draw he points attention to it. Yeah. And you know, blowing snot rockets and spitting up in the air. And he goes, uh, they got the camera right up on him, and he goes to blow a snot oh, rocket. No. And he he blows it and it just stays like right here. <laughs> and the crowd goes, uh, I mean, it's tens of thousands of people. Yeah. It's in a soccer stadium, and they and they all go, oh, <laughs> like a <laughs> communal, ah. Oh. And then uh and then it Quickly, the cameras go away, and they start showing the audience. It looks like almost chaotic. We're like, ah, get off that. And then it, it goes back to him on the screen. Still there. And it, not only is it still there, he's doing this. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. And I was just, I looked at Christine. I was like, Rocking it's off. over. Yeah. I'm like, it's over. He's, it's, a, it's done. He can't be cool anymore. Yeah. I think, he, I think he was such a legit rock star that he could only rock that hard for so long without your body given up and i feel like he's like uh it's kind of like an old wrestler like you know when there's guys out there in their 50s and 60s yeah, it's yeah. like sting is back I ain't shitting on skin sting i and i heard that he still does a great show but he's 60 and yeah he can his knees and everything is blown out and he's still trying to do it and you're know, like the nostalgia you're like still trying like is it as good no but he's here you know like oh. you got to respect that it's like when the warrior did his speech in a suit and the warrior mask on, you're like, just take the makeup off or don't wear the suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember. That's I was I actually was talking to somebody about that yesterday. I guess that was a more seminal moment in my life that I realized when he came out right before. Like, he, yeah. didn't he like die three days later Quickly, or something? Yeah, like like a week or two. Yeah, I think oh, really quick. Yeah, he came out and did like a. He's all melted. Everyone, yeah, yeah. 
he legally changed his name to Warrior, which is hilarious. That's pretty cool. It is. But Marilyn Man, I don't know what it is. Like, I don't know. Like, in fairness to him, I don't know what the solution, other than staying thin. No, he has to get sober. As a, that's he's, probably what he's it is. He's yeah. a really not the addict. And that's what in I, my opinion. No, I think you're right. I think that's what it is also that he, um, he went from being, I think, like a genius in so many ways to b believing the character instead of what the character was. Oh, uh, yeah. In the beginning, when he did uh, Politically Incorrect with Bill Maher. Yeah. Yeah, he was pretty sharp, right? Bowling for Columbine. Yeah, yeah, he would just take people apart because he would say, like, I'm satire. Like, I'm satire. And, you know, I, I used to love, when I was a kid, I loved all the simplicity of, like, they're outside raging and protesting because I rip up a Bible in my show. He goes, but I'm just making the point that it's a book printed in a book press. Like, it's only what you put into the words on the page. And I was always just like, what a great fire yeah. back. It was like, He's like, yeah, I'm ripping a Bible. What does that even mean? It's like, it's just paper, really. It yeah. doesn't mean anything. And me ripping it doesn't change your religion or do. And uh, he was always so, like, you know, they were like, well, as the Lord of evil. And he's like, I'm not the Lord of, he was, he was aware of himself. Yep. And was able to look that kind of like, you know, called freaky or cool and like speak that eloquently on it. And now the last thing I listened to him interview wise was he did Mark Maron's show, mm. uh, WTF. And I thought he was borderline. It was annoying me that he was almost disrespectful to him the whole time. He was drunk. He answers things very like smart ass, sarcastically to his make his whatever entourage guys laugh. Yeah. And Mark Maron's just like, so what made you uh, get into music? You know, and he just gives some like dickish answer. All right. And then Mark's like, ah, okay, you know, all right. <laughs> it's just yeah. awkward. We've had him on the show a couple of times, and it yeah. was definitely. Um, he he had a liking for me, so that made it easier. Nice. But if you asked him anything that was could even slightly be considered uncomfortable, mm -hmm. I could watch him physically back off. Like at one point, he even put his shades back on. Really? And like backed away from the microphone, and I was like, "Oh, okay, S soften it." You know what I mean? And then when I softened it, they came off, and he came back in. Nice. And I was like, "Oh, okay, I get it." Don't. What's What's funny also is watching someone who almost physically was like an art piece yeah and what he did now like i read his book when i was younger and everything and i went through and i know all the pictures and he looks now like his father which is hilarious yeah right who's it's like an like older bam. an older jewish looking guy yeah bam is starting to like, look like i remember Phil. when i used to be on tour with bam it was actually like really noticeable he would bring it up he everywhere we would go when we get out of the bus he would immediately start doing push-ups and crunches mm -hmm. everywhere all the time and it was very obvious that he was doing that because he didn't want to look like his father when yeah, he got older. Yeah. <laughs> and, he, and I think he might have mentioned it a couple of times. I didn't have to, like, figure it out. He, like, stated it. And then to watch him get bigger and start to look like him, and I'm like, I, I bet you you don't like that, but you can't give up the, the alcohol to No, and, to and I wonder, thin. I'm like, I, almost, I don't know if it's, I feel like it wouldn't be my place, but I almost reached out to Steve-O because I think Steve-O, who I'm friends with, uh, I watched Bam's, like, interview with him. That he yeah. just did the new one that he just did where Bam's kind of like, this. The, the temperament seems to be like, Bam's doing great, man. He's doing really good, and he's got himself together, but he didn't sound great on the show, and now he's going to start doing, he's going to be opening for Steve-O on the road. You're not up to speed. Uh, oh, really? Cause I was almost going to go, Steve-O, should you not do that? Like, yeah. I don't know if it's good for Steve-O to have. He, you, he blew it. Yeah. Already, he got drunk after the show with his kid, and then stayed up real late, and then posted about what a piece Jeff Tremaine is, mm -hmm. and the and and Johnny Knox like had kind of la launched one, mm -hmm. and then Steve O in the morning fired back. Really, he's like, I I can't help you. Like, if that's how you're gonna be, I gave wow. you the shot. He even brought up, he's like, dude, you're getting wasted with your kid. And you're trying to say that the most important thing is your kid, but you're doing this. He's like, you're going to lose your kid. You're going to lose your life. And I feel like I can't help. So he blew it. Oh, wow. Then they only did a couple dates together. Tough. I guess, huh? Tough. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and it's funny because Steve, that's what I thought was interesting on the do on the podcast they were doing, Steve-O's podcast. At the end of it, he's like, well, dude, he goes, you're doing great. You sound better than I've heard you sound in a long, long time. And I was yeah. like, what am I missing? Yeah, because, no, because he sounded way worse, dude. Sure. He was, like, not making sense for a while. Did you – one of the funniest <clears> – <throat> it's a drop on one of our 
on the bonfire we have for uh he went on dr phil who did uh bam okay a while back and it's just such a funny piece because he's manic he's out of his mind on it that's not necessarily funny but the way they got him to do the show to agree and he was so out of his head that he believed this it was they told him like yeah come on and dr phil is gonna help you be able to talk to your wife about what's going on basically they told him like and he believed like Come on, and I'm going to tell your wife to shut up and leave you alone and right. let you do your drugs. Yeah, because he <laughs> believes he's right. Right. So he went there and did, but he, when it was unfolding, he wasn't catching it. So Dr. Phil's like, you know, Bam, we really do have to talk now about your addiction problems. He's like, yeah, yeah, but like, tell her, like, leave me alone. Just let me do drugs and shut up. <laughs> and that it, was his argument. And like, just like well, like well into it, is Dr. Phil's like, but Bam, do you think maybe the substances you're taking? He's like, Dr. Phil. <laughs> I believe we were here to tell her to shut up about it already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the fact that it's like way, way too deep in it, he still thought that, like, he didn't get the surprise yeah, of the yeah, surprise yeah, yeah. party. Yeah. He's like, sure, I am doing drugs at a felonious uh, clip. <laughs> tell her to shut up about it already. <laughs> yeah, that's not a, especially when you're older, you know? Because we, they helped Steve O. You know, Steve O was so far gone, dude. I remember at one point hearing him on the uh, Howard Stern show, and I was like, Oh, that's it. Yeah, like, yeah. there's no coming back from doing it that hard. The first time I ever met him, and it was funny, it was almost the reason why. So when I was younger, I would always love Jackass, but my personality wasn't like, I'd want to hang with those guys. Yeah. It's like, I like watching them do what they do, but I would have a problem if, People I wouldn't think it's funny if, like, someone walks up and shaves a big chunk of my hair out of my, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I'd be like, hey, we're not talking ever again. <laughs> but I love watching it. <clears throat> I was like, I would never want to hang with them. And then he came when he was still on drugs. Steve on PCP oh. to the cellar and like made us. I thought he was cool if it makes sense. I'm like, oh, Steve O, Steve Oing. Yeah. But he was out of his tree. By the time I became friends with him, he was sober and it was funny. He invited me over to his uh his suite he was in for dinner before the show one night. Yeah. And he cooked and he's vegan. Yeah. And he made like stuffed tofurkey yeah. and a salad. And just while we were eating, it was kind of quiet for a second. I started laughing and he was like, what? I go. I don't know. When I was like 17 watching Jackass, I didn't think our first hang would be eating a vegan meal that you just with salad tossers. Like, yeah. you know, the whole, <laughs> he really presented a lovely meal. <laughs> and I'm just like, <laughs> that it's is just awesome. not what you picture of like Steve. No. But he's a, he's a great dude. Because he really he turned it around. He yeah. did the, all the work. Mm -hmm. he, got, he went to rehab, then he did sober living for a really long time. He stopped himself from having sex. Like he locked down everything. It wasn't the thing. It, the reason, that, the way they were able to get him to go to rehab was, they agreed to come over so he can film. Yeah. I think riding a mini motorcycle. He said, through his window, over the alley between the yeah. buildings, and into the window of his yeah. neighbor who hates him. Yep, yeah. he's gonna kill himself. And they were like, Johnny Knoxville was like, totally. I'll grab some cameras. I'll be over in fifteen minutes. And then he was like, everybody, let's go. Like we have to go get him to a hospital. Yep, yeah. that's which wild. Is, which is. He saved his life, mm -hmm. you know, with that whole thing. And, and I, you know, I've heard it from several of the guys that were there where, you know, Johnny's face, Steve-O says, like, his face was not playing around. Yeah. And Steve-O could see it, it even in his blacked-out drug haze. Like he's being spoken to now. Yeah, he was like, oh, okay. Like, this is real serious. And it's like, yeah, dude, like, we're done for sure if you don't go right now. He did it. Did he have to do amazing. multiple tries, Steve-O? I think so. It was multiple tries? Yeah. I think because he'd been before. But I think once that one happened. That one was it. Yeah. yeah. But he obviously had been through a lot before that because they just deny that it's a problem. And they're so high that they can't, you can't get in their brain to, that you're trying to help them. Well, you know, it's also the Artie Lang sort of thing. Yeah. In that I'm with, like, I... I I love and I feel like trying to get empath him? and uh, yes, okay. but it's uh, I, I'm empathetic for and sympathetic for a while, but there is a point where like you just have to like move on with your yeah. life. Like the excuse is too much for so yeah. long, and I think uh, with Bam, it's Ryan Dunn. But at a point, it's kind of gross that you're scapegoating that. Yep. And with Artie Lang, it's what I felt for a long. As much as I love Artie, and I do, I think he's brilliant, and I me too I love. It. And I watched it, and I felt for a while, like, genuine, like, bad. Because it's like, oh, his dad, he blames himself yep. for not being there for his dad's construction accident. 
and this and then his family and he's got these problems and, and i thought by the end it's like it's isn't that he loves heroin yep like I, it's, I can't like now it's more just like hey dude get your together instead of uh having that like it's like dude i'm rooting for you now you're now you're almost just like hey buddy like dude it's in, your dad died 30 40 uh, years ago at this I, point i have the same you know, the things that have happened to me in my childhood has made me what i am today and i react in ways that are really inappropriate because of the damage that was done a, sure. as a child but i went to therapy you know like i'm not cured by any means and I recently put my foot in it with with Lewis, you know, like that guy came out where I got all frustrated and 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 felt, you know, like that I got ripped off and my whole event is like, I'm like, dude, I can't take this anymore. And I flipped out on him. And then I called him afterwards and was like, dude, I'm sorry. That was like, like whatever happens, you know, I hope your knee heals. I, I'm, that's not me. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you guys like saw each other and like because he was yeah. like he's like I love Jason. It's like oh, really, <laughs> yeah. But it got weird. You know, it got weird. No, listen, we all do. I have things, and then you have to go back and be like, wow, I just did the thing again. I just did right. it again, like the thing I do. I say I won't do. But what I was getting to is, it's not my parents' fault anymore. Right? You yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. You have a chance I'm to change it. In my fifties, and it's like, dude, you can't. You can't blame anybody else anymore. I like guess you haven't worked on it enough. You haven't got yourself to be calm under pressure, and it's your fault. Like regardless if he doesn't want to take the fight anymore, it's got nothing to do with it. Like your reaction, I ruined it. Like I made people hate me because of the reaction. Right. And people are still mad at me. Like, oh, well, well, you know, like, well, Lewis had a knee surgery. Now what? I'm like, dude, I wasn't. Yeah. Like I talked to him on the phone and he was, I was like, get, well, after you get it fixed, do you want to fight? He was probably not. Like, he doesn't want to fight. <laughs> and it freaked me out, okay? Because I, I didn't want to fight, but I was ready to fight. And I hated that I got in that mindset. I hated that I had this whole training camp. I'm too old for a training camp, dude. <laughs> like, it just sounds so stupid. I'm at the gym. Everybody's like 28. You know what I mean? It's just like, Oh, you're, you're gonna fight. Like, you drink an exit 5 a.m. to fight Lewis. <laughs> yeah, because I didn't want to lose. I had to sure, take it sure. serious. I was treating it like I was gonna fight somebody that was really good. Like, just in case. Yeah. I'm not that guy where I'm like, oh, dude, my you know, I mean my background will win. I don't need to train. Like, that's how you lose. Yeah. So lightly. I was getting really serious and, and and now you got blue balls. <laughs> yeah. And, and it, I get it. And I think the 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 mindset of getting ready to hurt somebody and then him get you know like not wanting to do it anymore i it, w it went directly at him i i lost it he you know? hurt you emotionally <laughs> yeah I, I i feel like there's an ego that doesn't want to admit that but yeah no for sure and i said we all like have our we're sort of like you know we're slave to a, some degree of like our wiring so you're yeah. gonna have the thing and it's like learning how to like fight it right it's something like that let me say like how do you feel you know bam marger it's like Man, Dunn died. Like it was his friend. They were partying hard. He probably feels like survivor's guilt to some degree. All these things he's yeah. got going on that he has to rationalize. But now you're like, I think he likes booze and drugs. Yeah. Like I think that's what wins the thing now. I think he's maybe it's, maybe it's clouding dealing with the Ryan Dunn stuff. Maybe. But, but he's got a kid. Yeah. Like when you lose yeah, a yeah. friend. How old's the kid? Not old. Like little kid, right? I think oh, like so he was, oh, so he didn't get drunk like with. I thought maybe like an older kid that he got drunk with. You're saying he got drunk while he was with his supposedly child. taking care of. The yeah, kid. and he's uh, on. He's already lost the kid. Yeah, yeah and he's yeah. on. He's I don't know what it is, but he's on like a a thing. Where, yeah, restricted like visitation. Yeah, and they're watching him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you get him, and it's not like he ain't getting him like once a week or anything. Like a, like no, other no. people do. This is like. Every now and then he gets him. And then for that, you do that while you've got him. You just had to not do it for, I think he probably only had him for a day or two, you know? It That's seems like the difference is like, I think Steve-O, I don't know what the difference is on a basic level between the two of them, but Steve-O hazily was able to see a vision of like a whole different life for himself that he was attracted to, mm -hmm. that he wanted to move into. I haven't seen Bam in years, but it seems to me like, he doesn't see anything on the other side of this. Well, so the choice is either was, get was hammered or to, don't. Yeah, I think he was trying to, I think that's what Steve was trying to present to him. Like, dude, we got stories. You can do yeah. this. Yeah. You can do this. You can do anything. Yeah. He's already done the impossible. Yeah. The guy made it as a pro skateboarder. There's barely chances of ever anyone ever doing that. Young, and too, then right? made a, uh, And then made like a, 
a, a monster of a scene that like built made skateboarding bigger. Like he was up there with Tony Hawk, where like people that didn't skate knew Bam and that got them into skateboarding. Like yeah. he was creating a huge force of people bringing the masses to us. He like made it was a, it he was made a, horrible bands famous. Yeah, several of them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know, the, right? I know him was. What's the guy Vart and that? Uh, yeah, Villa, yeah. Villa, Villa Wait, Vallo. Yeah, ridiculous. Nice guy. Is he a nice guy? Nice guy. I don't know him. Okay. I don't know him at all. I just know, like, I, I know, like, the Hardogram mm -hmm. yeah. was like the thing. It was yeah. like his deal. Tony and CKY was his brother. I band, was hanging right? out when that whole thing popped off, and it was one day it's Bam. We're skating. Next day, Bam's covered in makeup, seventy-five chains on, <laughs> all, more rings that, than fingers. And and uh, you know, rrr, 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 rrr. I'm like, why are you mumbling so much? And and then, and then also kind of shining me. Yeah, that was the bit where I was like, wait, what did you? We, what do you mean? Like what? He's like he didn't have time for me anymore. And I was he's like, also what? like I said, he's he seems like his person. That's why I I didn't like Viva La Bam the show at all. Yeah, uh, okay. I stayed away from that because I I looked at him as like a little bit older than me because again, even when I. I didn't start comedy when Jack Ace came out, but a few years later I did. And like, uh, I just thought like, it, it, I watched him with his parents, like the, the bits are funny, like pranking them and stuff, but just the general overall way he like talked to them and would do certain things. I was like, oh, he's like a child. Yeah. Like he's really like a, like a, I want what I want and I want it now child. And it's working out. He's getting kind of whatever he wants. And I think he's not that anymore. I think, uh, I don't know if he, I'm speculating, but I don't know if he feels guilt or like, there I go, I blew it again with Steve-O. I think he still has like a, Steve-O, you're going to tell me really that I can't oh, party sure. a little bit? Yeah. I can't party a little bit, dude, if we're doing shows? Like, the, I think he's a child. The post he did when he blacked out that night was like a reliving of, he went back in time, like it happened five minutes ago. It was like, it's like I get blacked out, wasted, and, and you see me tweet at two in the morning. It's like, fucking serious X that ruined my life. Blah, blah, blah. Like, it's like, dude, it's over. It happened. And yeah, you over. wake up and you're like, hey. yeah, but I don't think he wakes up and goes, hey. Yeah, I think yeah. He wakes up and just grabs a beer and goes, yeah, when are we going to get Jeff Tremaine? It's like, dude, none of us are going to get Jeff. Jeff's not a bad guy. Like, it, you didn't. It was you drink too much, and they had a contract to not drink to do the movie, and you drank. It's it's not it, it's no one else's fault. It's not Jeff's fault. Like Jeff, I know Jeff. He's a really good guy. Is he hard on people? Yeah, dude. I feel like he wants the best, and I, I don't know if I'm not in Jackass, but I have film stuff with him, and I mm -hmm. I can tell he brings a thing that makes you want to bring your A game. Yeah, and in that line of work, that's a gnarly. You know, you could talk all the smack you want, but have you ever been in a porta potty and they're about to shoot you into the sky with poo? Like you, you, it's or the sea do just going and you know you're gonna land on grass and dirt. Right. As it's a guy like that's been in yourself. predicaments where I'm like pretty sure I'm gonna get hurt right now. I want out. You yeah. know what I mean? I want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> but I've already set this whole thing up. Everybody's here, cameras, and I'm like, oh, you know, here I go, and, and, and a pain. And the misery afterwards, and I'm like, why would anybody you do that? Thirty percent. I'm walking out of this with a broken arm. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did that jump out of a buggy onto a skateboard, and the people that built the ramp was just like, they just didn't really care, and they didn't. They had the <laughs> jump go this way, and the landing ramp was like over here, so I had to leap out of the car to try and land on the ramp. And I, the first time, I missed the ramp and went like forty feet to my butt, Ugh. and really hurt myself. Katie, like, how wrecked was I? For not weeks, months. Months, yeah. I couldn't bend over for a long time. Just like tailbone or Yeah, I just wrecked it and it wrecked my spine. Like everything was off. It took like a long time to get you, past and, that. And you knew it was going to happen as you were getting ready to start doing it? For like, sure. It's probably not going to work out. For I was like, it's a 70-30 and I'm talking 70% you're going to get wrecked. And I was like, we're all here. you know. And that's one time. Imagine... Three months of like you get up in the morning and you are jumping it again, or you're doing one that's just as dumb. And Jeff's like, "Come on, man!" Like, and you do it. Let's say you do it, and it really hurt. And he's like, eh, "That's good." <laughs> but can you? That I could, I could, I can imagine how difficult that would be, and especially if I'm an addict. And I'm thinking, you know, what would take the pain away a little bit? A couple yeah. beers, little maybe H. a painkiller. Yeah, yeah, a little H. <laughs> little H. <laughs> <laughs>
Hey everybody, Jason Ellis talking about Liquid Death. I like Liquid Death so much I bought into the company. It's the coolest thing ever that Water's ever done. It's like, who's really cool in music? Uh, Miley Cyrus. But water. If you are still drinking water in a bottle, your friends won't say this to your face, but they secretly hate you. Yeah, you you're need lame. Alpine fresh sparkly or flat or, or flavored ones they got flavored ones too delicious little tint of flavor just yeah. the right amount of sweet just the right amount of flavor recyclable come on man you got to help the world out and be cool at the same time it's a win-win do you want to be cool or do you want to be an embarrassment to your friends and family and bad for the environment you can find liquid death mountain water on amazon or at a retailer near you i see it everywhere it is not hard to find and jason ellis show listeners get 20 percent off their first liquid death apparel purchase exclusively at liquiddeath.com slash ellis that's how you get there make sure they know we sent you liquiddeath.com slash ellis they got cool hoodies too Fantastic measure, but probably. <laughs> he goes, I cannot get rid of this migraine. <laughs> yeah. Probably a little H will help this. <laughs> oh, dude, I feel like I was in my younger days when it came to taking drugs. Like if I broke my arm and they gave me painkillers, I would do it in a way where I totally knew that I was being abusive. Of yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Like I'm like, oh, man, it's killing me. I need like four of them. And they're like, four, it says one every four hours. I'm like, yeah, but oh. <laughs> I got my wisdom tooth out. They're like, here, you get a prescription. We'll give you eight Percocets. I go, take the other one out and give me 16. <laughs> like, take the other wisdom tooth out then too. <laughs> give me 16. But I've never had, like, again, cigarettes for sure. Um, Did food, you quit? Food, no, not yet. But uh, food, food for sure. But, like, addiction with, like, drugs, alcohol has never been, like, my, so I've never, like, wrestled with that very much exact same thing like you're lucky man. it's like I, baffling to me if i, I have it's just like part of being a dude was sort of being an alcoholic or really being an alcoholic i will say what i will say is, <laughs> as i get older what i'll say is i get older because i never had a, when i was young i really didn't drink at all uh here and there a couple but i drove always and i had a daughter very young so i was at like the partying scene i didn't hurt when i was 22 i didn't really just party young very much then as i got older moved into the city wasn't driving as much. I could like kind of Uber or walk wherever I was going. I started drinking more. And I because I never was a big drinker, I I just don't drink excessively. So I don't have like drunk in like where'd you go? I don't even remember how I got home. I just don't yeah. really have stories like that at all. I just so my my thing with alcohol is like so I drink probably too many days a week alcohol, but I'm never like it's not affecting yeah. my life. Like I don't wake up hungover because I'm not getting that kind of drunk. Right. Do you know what I mean? So like I probably do drink too much alcohol, but I, again, it's moderation of things. I can't, if I could smoke, <coughs> the doctors have told me, like, if you could smoke two cigarettes a day or a cigarette a day, he goes, I would never even tell you to stop smoking. Just won't change your life that much. Hmm. And I was like, yeah, but I cannot do that. That's so odd. That I can't do. I can have, if you go, uh, there's no, they did. Before my special, uh, Ari Shafir was like, oh, I learned this too. He goes, for the last two months before your special, just don't drink alcohol at all. It's just unnecessary bloating in your face or whatever. And I just was like, okay. It was then like way on me where I was like, two months. It's like, yeah. fine, whatever. Oh, and you did do it and it was no problem. No, I didn't <laughs> it. Not when you were doing other shows late at night, you were like, man, not no, at all. It wasn't that big of a deal. No, I just man, drank I Coke Zeros so or much. whatever. And like, whatever. Because <clears throat> I know though, I'm not going to where... I think people who drink heavy think that it's going anyway. They want to get loose and wild and yeah. have it. I don't think, I'm, in my mind, I'm like, I don't want it to be like sun coming up when I'm going home. Right. Like, I want this to be, yeah, I'm more drinking not... to be like, I'll get loose enough that I'll go, oh, when I go home, I won't sit awake all night with insomnia. I'll be able yeah. to go back and really just like put on TV and crash. Yeah, you're thinking ahead an addict doesn't. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah for me, like you're saying, the cigarette, you can do two, you can't do two. I can't, yeah. I can't do two beers. Yeah. Can I do two beers for a week? Yeah. Right, right. But will I have a third one in the middle of the day because there's a big thing happening and everybody else is buzzed? And I'm like, yeah, sure, a third. The third means there's no more game plan. Anything yeah. can happen. Like a fourth is totally possible. And if it's a fourth that's totally possible, that means bottles can go down my neck all day. Well, I've watched I mean, I, Christine essentially quit. I mean, she did quit alcohol. And... When her and Soda, Dan Soda, like describe what their problem with alcohol was, 
it's weird that I can't get a grip on it necessarily because I'm like, this is something where you don't have to stop if you can go out and because here's the thing with, with Christine particularly, I said uh, the 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 rough situation of someone quitting. I'm so proud of her and it's good for her health and she did. She quit drinking and she doesn't really she doesn't like fall off the wagon ever anything. Yeah. She quit and it was like a big thing. But before she the night went to like being weird to a cab driver or saying something crazy or doing, you know, falling in the street or whatever embarrassing thing she was going to do. She was really fun for like an hour. And then it, it, she didn't stop though. And it kept going. Yeah. And I, what I don't get is like, I go, if you know it, it's going to end in the bad. Can't, Why yeah. can't you do? Cause I'll be like three. I just did a joke. Three shots of tequila. That's what I do. I just yeah. do three shots. And then I kind of just nurse that for a while. And then if I, a couple hours later, maybe I'll do another shot or two. It's just, I don't want to go, but I'm like, Hey, you know, three is like a fun time. And she just says the, once you start, even though you know that, once yeah. you start drinking, even though everyone else is like, oh, yeah, Christine's a little loose, she's going like, it's already, it's starting to come down. I have to keep going. Yeah. And, and she just can't. And so the very, maybe three times in the past four or five years she's quit drinking, it's been like a conscious, like, you're on the road with me. It's kind of controlled environment. Once over the pandemic, like, can you just have, like, two glasses of wine? And yeah. she can't. Right. She goes, even the, even the two glasses of wine that in the house, she goes, I mean, the bottle's already open. I, that's me, dude. Like, that we might as well take it. So we're throw it away. She goes, yeah. And then the next, and even when she was describing to me that night that it's not that big of a deal, and I was kind of like, it's not. And she didn't do anything. We were in the house. Nothing happened. But the next morning, she was like, it's unbelievable. She's like, it's unbelievable. I, I, I promised myself I'll just do what we said, and I, and I was the first one to, to, to suggest, like, we might as well finish. You know, and I was like, well, yeah, sure, it's gonna be a fun night. I'm fine to have another glass. Yeah, but uh, it's weird. And Soder says the same thing. He goes, "It's not that I can't like have a beer. It's that like it will lead to, yeah, it'll be 15 beers in two weeks. That's what happens. Yeah, it's just probably best to walk away. That's yeah. what I did. Just totally from you. Yeah. I mean, what you're describing is that you're like, I've always said like, if you could do what future you wished you would have done, you like rule the world. Of course, but that's yeah. like elite level self-control and that, that's all it is yeah i i knew every morning when i woke up you know when i drank too much and lived in new york in my 20s i knew exactly how many beers i should have yeah, yeah. and then every night I'm like, ah yeah <laughs> next time and you wake up in the morning you're like ah easy enough tonight i'll just have five and it'll be fine and, ah. well my girlfriend it was almost like outside of like uh not remembering a guy who you or something like what's like the thing like, wh like where did it go good in those nights it's always like puked Passed out, yeah. fell asleep on the train. I mean, I can answer that. To... You you don't you don't think about it. It's weird. It just, I, it just I somehow never, buries never, the worst ideas. Only when I got older and it was things that, you know, like if I couldn't do something like career wise, because I'm so driven, if I messed up or found it really difficult to do a show or or I couldn't skate, mm -hmm. those were the ones where I was like, dude, like if you do that again tonight, you can't. Go skate. Yeah, your money so, starts hurting your money now. Right. So then I would stop. But whenever I didn't have to do it, then I could get trashed again. And then when I got older, hangover keeps going. Oh, three yeah. days later, and I'm like, oh. And I'm like, really, dude? Because you drank two bottles of wine three days ago. You're still <laughs> hammered. Like yeah. in a, in a not, you know, haze, a bit hazy, not sharp. And I know that it's affecting me. I'm sure relationship wise, Get cranky because I'm hungover. It's not fair to Kate, anybody. Kate, do you drink at all? You know, I used to. I used to party quite a bit. And the older I got, the worse my hangovers got. Yeah. And it was just like uh, weighing the benefits and having a couple drinks and then feeling like the entire next day just became not well, appealing She also anymore. stopped. When I quit drinking, she slowed down a lot. I did. Like she did. barely drank at all. And then recently she just stopped completely. Yeah, what's well, I was asking because like you know Christine not drinking like I will still have some drinks and yeah. but it does actually affect like we were talking yesterday she was like oh maybe I'll come to Nashville with you to the, for the gigs in Nashville now it's not that I wanted to come on the road with me she wants to come but when it's a certain gig Nashville I'm like oh the manager is a good friend Lucy who works there and the staff there like. It's one of those green rooms where after the show everyone kind of goes we put on music right. and everyone drinks and smokes and everything and I'm like. 
Christine, you're going to buzz kill that. Yeah. And I feel bad feeling that way, but it's not, I'm not, th I'm worried because I'm Mother Hennish. I'm like, yeah, you can come, but like, you're not going to really enjoy what I'm doing. Like, I'm going to be hanging out and getting loose and talking yeah. with everybody. And you're going to be like, stone so you know she'll smoke weed but it's just still not the same you no, know what i mean not. and it's like an odd especially thing. when you're new in it yeah so like i, I find the more time for that yeah. yeah i mean like I, I love her to come with me anywhere i go but it's that I just worry where it's like i am like you're not her fault but like you're gonna make it less fun for me yeah. because i'm gonna be worried about and she's not gonna have yeah. that much fun in that room either right yeah she's also not gonna enjoy it that much right. you know it's uh I noticed that was so, I never even overthink that because Dan Soder quit drinking so long ago now. It's been so many years. It does make it I'm like, easier. damn, man, Dan really doesn't go to like the after party ever. You huh. can't talk him into going into the whatever. You can't talk him to staying too long. At Skankfest, like the comedy jam they do at the end of every night. And I remember saying last week on the show, I'm like, remember so-and-so on comedy jam? He was like, dude, I was back in my hotel room hours before that. And I'm like, yeah, you left at like nine o'clock for the night. He was like, yeah, I didn't have any more shows. But I'm like, it's the festival, though, man. You yeah. got it. And he's just like, what am I going to do there, man? It's like, I can only drink so many Heineken Zeros before yeah. I'm like, what am that's, I doing? That's why I, Shirley Temples. There's only yeah. so many Shirley Temples I could drink before. I, I love coming. I love hanging out with all you guys. But when it does get past midnight, the party hour, I'm yeah. like, I, you know, like, what am I? And you guys are getting loose and you're kind of in, like, this could be something happening that you're kind of entertained by and because I'm dead sober. You don't realize it. It's not that entertaining. It's actually pretty lame. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and I, and Other getting... people being drunk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I still, it's funny because I don't get that kind of drunk usually. I still, I am very aware of the person talking too much and touch talking you a lot. Yeah. And, hitting, and I still, even if I'm drinking also, I have a little like, uh. but I mean, even just the idea, you know, because Christine's from here and she was like, let me go come out on that trip. And the other night when we, we were at the comedy store to like two almost when, it, no, I guess a little like 12 30 or so and then a few comics were like <clears throat> let's go to saddle ranch for one more drink <laughs> and i was like yeah i can go over there for one more and i was just thinking if she was there i'd be like nah we're just gonna go God. kick out because i'm like i'm gonna go have one more drink and it's not changing my night at all but like she's going over there just to wait for me to have one more drink yeah. and i don't think she looks at it that way she's like no I'll go and we have a bunch of friends here yeah. but i'm like ah if you're not doing the shot we're all doing like i just feel weird and bad yeah yeah, you'd be a tough guy to hang out with because I've hung out with you and I end up tapping out super early. And I can tell you guys are going to go strong. And you're right, you're not you're not messy at all. No, it's, well, I'm, also not, it's not, just, I'm not a partier. I don't do no. any, uh, I smoke pot, really. No. I don't do coke at all. I've never, I, I've only tried coke twice. And Probably it's been a zillion years ago. I, not for you? No. I don't think, I, I'd never be, I said the problem I think I would have would be more like, if I was going to have a drug problem, would be opiates. Hell yeah. Stuff yeah. like that. It would be, I like to, <laughs> hell yeah. To me, to me, it's how do you like zone out and like giggle at a movie. I said, that's why I think yeah. like, yeah. weed is the closest thing in the thing. That's what it does. You know, it makes, I'm going to sit here and this movie is going to be funnier now because yeah. I'm just zoned into it. And I think heroin would be more, when people take meth and stuff, I'm like, I'm already have to be up for like five days in a row. Yeah. I think it's a young man's game. Yeah, because I feel like when I got older, uh, the the would I do heroin if it if I didn't have to be addicted to heroin the next day? Yeah, it sounds pretty cool. Sure, write but a song to, real quick to do a bunch of rails and be like yeah, blah, 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 that sounds really bad to me. I'm not interested in oh, you know, the yeah, sun's people. coming up and I'm like <laughs> and I, and I, my throat and I, like I remember it like it was yesterday. You're you're crazy. I, All mean, the thing I heard the, the the attractive thing that anyone's ever said about meth. It's never been the reaction, how you feel, or anything. They go, dude, for 20 bucks, it's like two days worth yeah. of being high. And I'm like, wow. That's a really That's bad a, way to but, say it. But they go, yeah, they go, but you're up, you could be up for two days feeling fast and racy and getting stuff done. But like, that's not what I'm looking to do. I'm looking for the escape. I'm yeah. Not looking, I'm not looking to like, hey, I just recited my entire house last weekend. <laughs> yeah. uh, it was pretty crazy. Yeah, I, I never yeah. understood that <laughs> I'm going to do drugs and then vacuum. Like, I, yeah. I, I was more about, I got to do enough to, I'm running for sure. Like, I need to do enough where I'm like, I don't know anything anymore. I'm, yeah, it's like, I want to completely check out. Yeah. I want to not be nervous about this or upset that I have to go on a very long flight in two days and just, like, unplug. Your, your girlfriend runs Skankfest, right? Yeah, well, her and Rebecca and Lewis, the other three owners of it. You're not an owner of it? small percentage owner of it we're more like figureheads though because it's based off of our thing but 
in fairness of our level of ownership, it's like, aside from it, it does affect my life a lot because my girlfriend's so involved putting the whole thing together. It happens basically in my apartment. Yeah. But, um, you know, I really don't have, for me though, my responsibility is show up and have a blast at the show. Okay. Do you I'm find like, do it hard things. watching your girlfriend? Because I'm sure it's stressful, all these things you got to organize and things that fall through the cracks because that's just the way it goes. Like, but well, they didn't get you a room and she's down there doing stuff like oh yeah that... no, she's running crazy yeah, yeah no i try to like really uh it's also a funny thing it's it, it, skank fest is so fun i look so forward to it for so many reasons and the bummer of it is it is you know christina like hook up with girls with me we talked about that on the show before even like we'll hook up and stuff and that is like the mecca it's like this that's swingers resort weekend essentially huh. like we go there that's weird so many, all so katie and i got was COVID. <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't even we didn't even <laughs> like lick anybody's butt to get it it was just i got COVID. but there's so many like fans uh, and girls that are like i, I want to go back with you and chris and it's not that uh, christine in she knows she's working nuts and if she's like i'm here for three more hours like go if you want to go with her like you know have fun i guess yeah and uh it's not that she means it for sure but the bummer is like me and her together could be having a killer weekend but when she's done at the end of the night it's like she has to go to sleep and wake yeah. up in four hours and go do it again right so I, I do get her being out of it but it's the, it sucks when you when you come back from the night and you're like there's uh, well, instagram or whatever like, there's yeah. four girls who are like tell me what room you and christine are and she's like uh, jay he's like i, I walked you know, she's like 75,000 steps today or something. Yeah. And you're like, ah, uh, all right. So I kind of have to like, to some extent, not be able to like enjoy like that weekend of that kind of craziness because, yeah. you know, I want to go make sure, you know, rubber feet when she gets home and stuff. That's a, that's a rough weekend. Yeah. That's crazy because I don't observe a lot of guys getting laid at Skankfest. And it's sad to know that what little <laughs> action might be available on the floor. Is just... Well, a lot, of, a lot of the girls who come are there with guys, but we do have like every year. It's actually some people point that out. They go, "There's getting more girls and more pretty girls are like showing up to it every year." So I shouldn't even say it's not like a nonstop kind of thing, but it's just a weekend where, for sure, this you know, if she comes to me on the road in the road for a weekend just to do a weekend gig. It's not that it won't get offered here, but it's not the bulk. This is right. thousands of people yeah. who all know everything about us. And they'll also, a lot of them, think that's their shot to, you know, that's their chance to shoot their shot with yeah. that. Where they're like, yeah, almost like, hey, I, I would go back with you and Christine. And then I got to be like, she can't leave for three more hours Dude, and she exact, is exhausted. I do Alice Mania and Katie runs it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the exact same thing. And at one point, we had people that ran it and they didn't do very well. That's why Katie runs it. But back then when someone else ran it yeah we could do that and yep. yeah those offers were on the table but now that we've run it completely solo like uh, i feel like you know sometimes i'm on the mic and people are punching and stuff and i look over and i see her trying to organize all these people and i'm thinking uh you know if i go over and go hey this girl wants to have a three i wouldn't even bring it up well that's almost the <laughs> thing is like you're setting yourself up for you're gonna get in trouble for well, it's like the worst feeling because you like I've told her that with any of this stuff. Like, if there's something you don't want to do, if I suggest, don't make me feel like if I suggest something a little sexually outlandish. Like, if you don't want to do it, can you like nicely say you don't? It's like it sucks when because you can't be like something. <laughs> you listening, some, Katie? Because well, it can't be. Like, oh, is this a common thing? Because as my, it's because I'm creepy. But here's how I've tried to describe it to Christine. I go, uh, well, sometimes when I ask you, it's like what the hell are you thinking even asking me and sometimes she suggested or i suggested and she'd be like oh yeah that's a great idea and i go it's the idea and i try to explain it to her i go here's what's awkward about your reaction sometimes if if you like pizza right if you like it you like it all the time now it doesn't mean you want pizza every day or for every meal but when someone goes hey do you want pizza tonight you might be like oh no i had pizza like the other night or like no i'm not in the mood for pizza really you don't go it's like why do you want to get pizza again <laughs> Didn't we just have pizza like uh, uh, two weeks ago? And you're like, okay, listen, yeah. I thought we were both into this yeah. like thing, and then, yep. and then and then I'll be like, I'll never ask again. And then it's like, how can we never bring it up anymore? Like you don't even yeah. suggest we do. It. I'm like, because you barked that one time, and she's like, no, I love doing this stuff. Like, what? It's all. It can't be hot or cold only. I feel like. Yeah, 
Yeah, Katie, what's with you women? Yeah, Katie. <laughs> Chicks, am I right? When, I, when I'm like, hey, why don't, why don't we hook up with this <coughs> weird person? And I, I, it's different for me. Sometimes I do it where I'm like, yeah, you're right. Because also, I go, hey, this guy wants, and she's like, that guy is, uh, you know, or a trans guy or something. She's like, I don't want to. But I was going to say, wanna... Katie, do you have a, a different set of like stand like christine she has standards that's the difference with girls particularly, she has well, that's what i'm saying she does so christine wouldn't understand there's been times where like a girl you know because christine especially when she was drinking and being a little more aggressive herself yeah. with it she would bring home girls that i was like that girl doesn't want to hook up with me yeah and she would be like no she doesn't she's coming back with us like she would make it happen but she didn't understand and those are times where i'd be like yo i can't believe this girl's gorgeous yeah doing? yeah 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 and then when i would present sometimes i'm like Hey, it's like you know, like a bigger girl yeah. or something that, and we had to have a conversation one time. I go, no, you don't understand, Christine. I, but Christine's like, yeah, I'm not attracted to that girl. I don't, yeah. I don't, I'm not angry at her. I just, I don't want to. No, I don't want to. And I'm like, and then I'm like, are you sure? And then she gets kind of like a, what is it? Why are you pushing for this girl so hard? And I'm like, <laughs> because one time I want to feel like I'm doing them the, f you know, what I mean, like yeah. I'm like, this girl's super excited to hook up with me. Yeah, it's not like some some of these girls we bring back. I feel like they're dealing with me to hook up with you. And, yeah. And that vice versa situation happens too. And do you guys, that's a difficult thing too. Like Christine. I think it ended. Christine it doesn't want to hook up with girls if it's it, very obvious they're, they're dealing not, with her because yep. they want to hook up with me. Yes, a thousand percent. Yep. We've had so many of those that mm -hmm. it's more like it really has to be, they have to be about her. I said and, a smart. And they a have to be really hot. Which a is, smart girl. A smart girl. I always go, and I don't mind it. My favorite thing is when they go, uh, so what did uh what did a piece of like you do to get this uh, this hot chick for uh, talking about Christine? Yeah. And I almost like winking at the girl, going like, "Good, yeah. good move." <laughs> I'm like, "Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah." I shouldn't even be here. I'm a blah blah. Yeah. She's so hot, and you want to hook up with her? Like, I like that because I'm like, even if she doesn't mean it completely, I'm like, at least you're doing the right thing. You're making Christine feel like, "Hey, you want to watch me have sex with your boyfriend?" Yeah, that's much better. Yeah. Nailed it. <laughs> I'll remember that next time. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what happened. I feel like there was so many times there where it was always on. We were like Batman and Robin of the of the sex game. Like where I'd go, she'd go the other end, and we would just mole people. And I was like, man, <laughs> we are sex machines. And then I think from so many weird encounters, because I always, I never get scarred from it. I always find like, even if it wasn't that good, it's Story. probably funny. Yeah, Story. Like, it's entertaining. And I came... So it's not that yeah. bad, you know. Like I always get that done. No, we've had play, and I always, I kind of like the well, few but things. Sometimes Katie better. doesn't, and the, that changes it. The come, the camaraderie of it between me and Christine was always kind of great. Yeah, like that person that's, leaves, and you kind of talk. That's my favorite about. bit. The, the the bad ones are bad. The, the, the some of the good times are great, and we see someone a few times or for yep. a while. We we are hooking up with them, and then that kind of goes by the wayside. It's really a, it's such a deacon, but there's no formula that like is all the time that's why i said it's the most no. it, that's what my complaint is the guy i guess would be is the inconsistency of like i, I hate that i go like do you uh like that so-and-so girl hit up again and said like she'd love to hang out with us again yeah. and i said that could be like she'll be like oh that would be fun yeah she was fun or it can be like D didn't uh you hook up on the road or something three weeks ago? Like, wh how many? You know, and then like, you know, said you feel bad about. Yeah, yourself. and then you're like, I didn't mean the. Okay, I'm not sure. Yeah. And then it's like, you know, let's never talk about it ever again. And never do it again. And she's like, No, it's not that extreme. I go, It hurt. I said, if, Yeah. If she was just like, I explain. Yes. If I said, Hey, you want to do something wacky like sex shit tonight? If she goes, No, nah, like I'm a little tired tonight. Like, let's think maybe next week when you're back from the road, we'll do. It's not. Sometimes it'll be like, Why do we? Like, can we just watch a movie once? And you're like, yeah. we watched the yeah, movie. Don't the shame last three me for weeks. wanting to come all the time. Yeah, yeah. You don't know what it's like to be in here. <laughs> I, it's just like, come again, come again. I'm like, we just did. Yeah, but again, it would be good. I'm like, oh, man. But have you had to, uh, Katie, it's a question for you more. Have you <laughs> had to, watching Christine have to deal with the male end? Because when you're the girl of the couple, yeah. you get to see a little peek behind the curtain of what a guy has to do to hook up because remember me and christine the funniest was a girl coming back to some practical jokers cruise we were on yeah. and a girl after a show came back cute cute girl yeah. and uh she was like yeah so i like i dance uh, i'm in atlanta i'm a dancer for like hip-hop videos and 
So this white girl. She goes, yeah, I'm like a really good dancer. And then made us watch her hilariously not good dancing in her hilariously not big or famous people <laughs> rap videos of local. Yeah. And just been, she going, and uh, I'm looking at Christine going, like, I'm like, wow, like you are you going to like move to like LA or New York? Because you really got something there. And I'm just looking at Christine going like. <laughs> And then when she leaves, she kind of thought that was funny. Like, seeing, I was like, you see? I go, you can't. It's not like a guy. I'm like, Christine, if you want to hook up, you could, I mean, put whatever, like a, the equivalent of like a Craigslist or something add up. And like, a guy will be there. Yeah. Probably you can get a decent looking guy with a big piece. Yeah. He'll probably, probably show up at your door. And in under an hour, you could do that. And he's absolutely fine if yeah. you go, hey, I don't even want to talk. Like, just come in and start oh, yeah. plowing me. Yeah. The guy will be like, okay. Like, I'm like, you sometimes have to listen to a girl tell you about all of her dreams so she doesn't feel like a piece of garbage for being wow. a stranger. Yeah. I'm like, isn't that sometimes, you know, because she doesn't, it was hard for her to get that. It's like, oh my God, can we just like hook up already? I'm like, nope. You got to hear about her <laughs> teenage boyfriend who told her she would never be a good dancer. So that's yeah. when you had to spite him and become a dancer. You're right. Remember, Katie, we had two, and I think this is a part of the downfall of, of the sexual Batman and Robin. One lady, big hair extensions, big fake boobies and stuff. I think her father's like some old rock star, so she's like a trust fund baby of sorts. And she was the thing that we learned where girls are into me and they claim that they're bi, but they're not mm -hmm. to be a part oh, of it. That's a biggie too. Finding out in the moment that the girl doesn't go down Right, on because girls. she plays the game like oh, she's yeah. going to be into it. And then when it starts popping off, at one point it was like, here it is. And she just put her hands on it and went chicka chicka chicka, and looked up. She at, went, "Look, I'm like a DJ, wooka 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 on my geez, business." It's an old Dane Cook joke. I, but I saw. I got up and left. I saw it in Katie's yeah. eyes. Yeah, like I was yeah. like, that just you just ended this whole thing. Like Katie's not gonna play that game. Like if no. you're a little bit weird and not that into her, she's like, oh okay, bye. That wasn't the only thing that happened that night too. I remember I tried to s sit on her face and she didn't know what to do at all and just kept hitting me with her teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this girl has never been downtown before. Toothbrush. Yeah, and it's like Christine's like genuinely bisexual. So we've had those moments too where she's like, you did notice that that girl never like really did anything with me. And you're like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Tried to wrap it up quick. Also, I think <laughs> there's a harder time, like almost what you just said, like the big fake boobs, the hair extensions. I think, and am I right in that, Katie? It's a little easier to process that because it seems like a girl who's just for sex and whatever. Like, sometimes it's harder when we just have, like, a nice, sweet, <laughs> good-looking girl. Like, a, yeah. a girl that could, you know, we've hooked up with girls where, uh, you know, you just factor in your head. I go, if I was, like, a single guy, like, I would, like, date that girl. She's, yeah. like, pretty and sweet and mm -hmm. a, sort of a normal girl. Yeah, who's what's like, wrong with her? Why is she doing here? Stuff? <laughs> yeah, sort of. But uh, that's almost, I think that's, like, harder thing because then, again, if, they're, if they are a cool person... That's another toughie is when you have a name. Hey, Christine, should we call so-and-so tonight and see if they want to hang out again? Yeah. You know, it's like, what? why do you want to hang out again? I know, it gets tough. I know, but you finally like and it clicks and it's like, don't like them too much. And I'm like, well, it's better. It's healthier than like, I don't, I despise this person and we bone them. That would be real bad. But I've had that conversation a lot too. I would rather um, watch or hear about Christine getting gang banged then find out her and a guy really clicked and spent the whole they were supposed to have a meeting in the morning and they yeah. just went straight through to the night talking and watching a movie yeah, right. I'd be like oh no, don't i got he gave find each other's he, dreams yeah. yeah he gave her a book katie hooked up with some real jack tattooed guy <laughs> and they didn't hook up they just hung out and i hated him. Well, i had to meet him to see if i wanted to meet him you know yeah. I still hated him. I'm saying when you almost like <laughs> I described it, uh, I was like, yeah, if I, I could pro definitely process Christine hooking up with guys. Yeah. I'm like, but they have to be a human dildo. Yeah. Like use them like a, a, a living, breathing I'm a little bit story. different with that because I feel like from my therapy and stuff, I no longer are, am super down for the I don't care who you are, let's just do it thing. Mm -hmm. I like liking the person. Mm -hmm. And that's sure. something that Katie's always had. So now it really thins the herd because. Oh, the herd will be thin. And, up and you just... can't get it. I don't, I don't get any STDs. So now it's sort of like, you know, if you're like, hell yeah, I'll do both of you. And I'm like, right now, without knowing who we are, you'll do both of us. Do you have a 
fresh tests and it's like test <laughs> i'm like I, i'm not just you know, like i can't just take antibiotics every three months for you guys <laughs> i'm not gonna do that so that kind of so i so that thins it out e even more sure yeah because it's a it's a weird especially you know like what do you mean just right now you'll hook up with both of us you don't even know who i am look at me i'm pretty <laughs> creepy you should google me first like make sure i'm not like yeah look at well me and christine have I think with the exception of one person, we just picked up, met at a bar. Yeah. But that, even that was after a comedy thing we did. Right. But for the most part, it's been like, they do know who we are. Yeah. And like, do you know what I mean? Well, so, here's the one that stops this one for us. She doesn't like fans. That's big. If you're, if it's not going to be fans, uh, I, if it wasn't, yeah. especially with, again, Christine sober, if it's not fans, it will never happen. Right. Girls, at least. Do you know what I mean? Like getting girls yeah. back with us. Like I said, Christine's a girl. She could, hook up if she ever she wanted to but for if it's not fans i'm like no i go we are you know, me and my uh ex do you ever have fans that are a little too fanatic and mm -hmm. and, and and you're like oh no what yeah. have i done okay absolutely yeah. um no i don't think we've ever hooked up and then had like a what have i done but there's been people we've just met and they were and we were like oh we sh just shouldn't do this like you can see already it's like eh, it's too much or we're not super big on the pass around girl who's already you know through the years hooked up with lewis and five other people oh, i know yeah, that'd be different and i'm just like uh, sometimes they will but like i think we just have more of like a i don't know about that you know like yeah. and there's comedy groupies too sure yeah, yeah, yeah. oh hell yeah there are well, yeah, i've had one sure. that's saying something yeah <laughs> but i feel like it's more if you it, some people are have like a really fanny look about them where yeah. they're like like they look at you like you're something else and it's like i'm not you know what i mean like that's not what it is and you, the more you look like that i know that when katie sees those eyes you're ruining it like she's gonna she's gonna stop this from happening because she's like we can't do that that girl's like freaking out on you and it's weird so it's always it's like a fawning over you yeah yeah, that that and I, and that's from past mistakes where it was like come on she's cool it's gonna be cool and she's like yeah okay and then the person's like trying to stay for breakfast and and just staring at you like with crazy <laughs> eyes and you don't even notice it and i'm looking at this person just like staring at you my, it's so uncomfortable my old roommate uh mike Fenoy is a great comedian he said one of the funniest things when we lived that was the other thing too we had a roommate when we first started doing that kind of stuff so you know having a threesome in a bedroom oh, while you wow. have a roommate across the hotel, uh, the the apartment is yeah. hilarious but so one night we went back, me and Christine met this girl. She was like, let's do it. Um, we met her at the comedy club. I thought she was just like somebody was at the show. Yeah. And then right before we walk in the door, she goes, D I just, this isn't going to make you feel different about like me as a comedian, is it? And I went, well, I, um, I didn't know you were a comedian. So yeah. I said, no, yeah. I'm going to feel the same way. I did not know you were a comedian. <laughs> yeah. And she was like, all right. And we go inside and she... It's only important for the. Re I hope you get the reference. I think you will. But he goes. Uh, she was wearing, like a Jodie Foster accused in the accused jacket. It was like fringes. Yeah. Like a yeah. leather jacket with like fringes yeah, all down. Yeah. Wow. And she was a very cute girl. And she put. Did that, she have a cowboy hat she, on. No. But cowboy she, boots. She threw. <laughs> nope. She threw that on our couch, and then that jacket, and we went in the room, and we hooked up. Now. The move, I guess you say, is when we're done, we lay around for a little bit. We don't, we don't like boot people out of the house right yeah. away. But uh, also, this is where smoking does come in hand. Because I go, well, I have to go. Like, come outside. We'll go smoke a cigarette. And then I'll just be like, what's your address? Like, I'm gonna get, let me get you an Uber. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. I'm like, you didn't drive, right? I'll get you an Uber. And then we get them. And like, you know, so again, a half hour to an hour after we're done, they're gone. Yeah. This girl goes like, oh, but I'm like so, so tired. Like, is it okay if I just like sleep here for a couple hours? And... We just didn't know what to say, so we're like, yeah, okay, that's fine. So she sleeps, like, between us. Oh, which, oh. see that? No. It was, I, well, it was a couple hours, but here's the thing. It was, well, if it makes sense, though, almost like they were cuddling more. She was like, the sex of that was great. Okay, okay. There was nothing problem with that. And Christine was like, yeah, I guess we could. And then we woke up in the morning and hooked up again, and I was like, oh, that was actually kind of cool that she stayed over that. It was only a few hours she slept there. It, so then I go... All right, well, I uh, said, so we got to start moving in our day here. I go, what? Well, let me get you an Uber. Oh, and she goes, I'm just still so exhausted. Is it cool if I just get a few more hours here? And no. we just didn't know what to do. And we were like, okay. 
And then we went out in our living room and left her in there to sleep for a while. And then my roommate wakes up and he goes, hey, what's up? He goes, this is how dumb we sound too. If I was him, he would have gotten madder about this. He goes, hey, what's up, guys? And we were like, shh. He was like, what? I go, oh, I go, this, this girl we brought home, she's like sleeping there right now. And he goes, uh, he goes, what? I was like, yeah, we hooked up with this girl last night. And then she kind of won't leave and keeps sleeping. And he holds up her jacket and he goes, who'd you fuck, Richie Sambora? <laughs> 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 oh man! It really tickled me. This the fringe jacket. What a weird thing. And again, when that happens, like you know, those are the kind of moments that you're like, damn. You guys are selling the absolute shit out of this. I gotta say. Are you being sarcastic? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. It reminds me. Yeah, we were I talking was hoping about that this conversation would trigger Katie to be a little bit more like loose and hoary on my like team. You should, but. I, I feel like this is just making it more of a No, because I don't think I don't think it is a bad I think there's like the things are great. It's just uh It used to be fun. Remember when you can't let the girls bad. in the limo, Katie? That was fun, right? For you. I thought they were both gross. <laughs> this reminds me of circling back to what we we're talking about earlier. This is like an alcoholic who it's like it always starts out fun, but here I am another morning regretting it. This reminds me of when I did mushrooms and like the first five times were awesome. So I did it. 85 more times. <laughs> it was never as awesome. And they were all never bad. As awesome. They were it is. 85 <laughs> bad times. Here's the thing. I do think it's good. I think also because I think there'll be a natural walk, walk away from it. Just a natural time where like I don't really care about sex that much anymore. You think that will happen? But I think we're, I think if it happens when I'm 60, maybe even. Yeah. I'm just saying there is a day of that happen. But I'm already 45. You know what I mean? So I'm like. Yeah, let's rock while we can, like, rock, That's for sure. That's how I see it. I, could, <laughs> I, I know it's a, like, I have a heart condition. I'm not sure how long I'll live. I have that fear always of just being taken off the planet too soon. Yeah. And then I am 51. Like, how much longer before I'm so hideous that I, you can't have me in the mix? Right, right. That's, you know, that's what I was saying. Like that's fifty-one, a, like sixty, you got to be. I got to be gross by then, right? But what it has to become, which I'm sure you've gotten a bunch because you guys are, you know, speak freely and publicly about that kind of stuff, as me and Christine do too. Is uh, the guy? That's why I've said. That's why I feel like a little. It's a little misleading. That's not a good endorsement for this because the good times are great. The only time. That's why I said about threesomes in general. It's like, oh, do you guys? Must not do it at all anymore because I go no, just nothing funny's happened. I go to go say, man, we hooked up with the hottest chick last night and it was awesome. I go, who cares? Yeah. What are my friends gonna say about that? They don't care. Right. It's funny if you go, uh, yeah, she came over to hook up and then uh, got crossfaded and essentially passed out on our chair and we had to stare at her so she didn't swallow her tongue for five hours. Yeah, and, that is a better story. And send her home is a much better story, but you know conversations after it happens finding out you did something wrong afterwards or they didn't like something or you didn't like something whatever it is people always on the road they'll be like i'm looking for a girlfriend like you do like like, you, you, like you're living the life dude that's perfect and i go it comes with its own set of problems oh hell yeah that's what i said it's not a flaw it comes with we've had we've had more fights about that than money yeah. ever so do you know what i mean or any kind of like money us. thing it's like it just and I get over a thing where Man, like, we're really selling it. We're like, I thought I could. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're like, I thought that was fun. She got mad a couple times. I don't regret it. I don't, don't want to take it back. I, like, I want more. A couple times I didn't call her to give her a heads up on the road oh. when I was going to hook up. Oh. And, Me, and when, I've done that. And when she asked why, it's kind of the thing I said. I go, because I wanted to do it. I know you don't have like a gel you don't really care about the action happening you've seen it happen you it's not that's not what you're jealous of it's just that the blowing hot and cold like i want to call you and go hey so guess what i'm not going to be bored in cleveland tonight sitting in a hotel room watching tv till five in the morning this girl is like throwing it so i mean that's that phone call at a time was like she'd go yeah is she hot let me see send a picture of her like oh yeah hell yeah yeah See if she'll let you take a picture and send it to me or a video. Do you know what I mean? Like she'll, and then sometimes I'll go with this girl. Why? Where is she from? Where does she know you from? <laughs> Explain What's how that, that feels, I'm like, I'm Jay. Like, soul crush. Because you're like, oh, I thought I was. In my mind, I was like, look how much I've learned and grown. I'm about to call my girlfriend and tell her, you know, hey, I'm going to do this. And I love you. And it's so cool that I get to. And I go, because I, I thought she's, every time she's going to go, oh, yeah, nice. She's hot, huh? Yeah, yeah. kick ass. And it's a 50 50 ball where sometimes I call and I go, <laughs> and by the way, because it could be, and in fairness to her, 
she's on her period. She feels kind of gross yeah. right now. And yeah. it's like, oh, now you're out there having sex with some girl and, and I'm just home being a gross animal. And, yeah. and you're like, no, no, no. I just like, I just want to kill some time in, in yeah. Cleveland. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't want to eat late night shitty food. You yeah. know what I mean? This is better than that. Yep. No, yeah. it makes the tour yeah. easier. So I wouldn't call sometimes and, you know, and then she found out and then she'd be very mad. It's weird. Like, it's, it's a weird argument too because you're like, you've... The action is not what you're upset by. You're upset that I didn't tell you about it. But I'm like, I'm telling you I didn't tell you because I know you don't over care about the action. Right. But I may have just, like, I felt like sometimes I call you and tell you and I'm ruining your night instead of making your night like, ooh, that's going to be hot to hear about. Is it the principle, Katie? Well, I don't know what their their rules are in the relationship. But with us, it's just like, I think with any relationship, you you want the honest communication, right? So you want to know that you're respected enough to be, like, thought of. Like, hey, I'm going to do this. That's cool with you, right? Because if it wouldn't be cool with you for whatever reason, like, you get the veto power as the primary, right? So it's just the respect. Yeah, and then the worry. Well, what about the, if it's the, late well, the you're not awake? Can I just say, can I text and go, I'm about to? You can't, can I? I have to get a verbal approval, right? My, my fear, yeah. my fear on those vice. <laughs> can can I just send yeah. you an evite? <laughs> <laughs> if I knew how to do that, I would totally do that. Well, my concern also, and just when you know your own like kind of foibles, and it's that if I call, almost the reason I didn't call was because I could rationalize then. It's like she's was probably going to say, go ahead, do it ultimately, but maybe she'd be sh shitty about it. Maybe she'd be like, this is hot about it. But I go, if I call and she says, no, I don't want you to do it, like, I'm probably still going to do it. <laughs> oh, that's so, I, can't, I, can't, so like, I can't do that. Don't make me lie about it. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Now, by the way, there's been, she's vetoed, <laughs> she's vetoed that on the road. I don't think, I don't, I don't know if I've actually ever done that exact thing. I'm just saying, I know my personality. Yeah. That's almost like calling and having her give, it's like, you're just going to make me feel more guilty about doing it behind your back anyway. And I feel horrible that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Versus I can just go, again, yeah, it's all self, you know, uh, saving yourself, you know, like rationalization. But I'm just going like, she was probably going to say do it anyway, even if it was like in a shitty tone or a fine <laughs> tone. Like, what a way. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> now, it, let everyone know, it is wrong. It's wrong what I'm saying, but... <laughs> It's just the, the facts of the matter, I think. But yeah, it's like they, they went to veto power. Again, we are just different creatures too. I mean, we yeah. I think we have a much higher prob probability. I don't think, I don't know, it could be wrong, but I don't think Katie's like thinking of like another guy often when she's with probably not. And like, I think guys just by nature, like some part of you will fantasize like, and that girl in a blah, 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 you know, pencil tucky America was like, huh? You start thinking about like, man, that'd be fun to fuck her every night, huh? You know, what I mean? any, any kind of thing like that where it's like, I think there's a fear of that that the girls have too. More where it's like, again, it's just I I got uh, shit a while back because over quarantine, Christine, they one day they merged Facebook and Instagram messages, and she ran my Facebook fan page, and then one day all Instagram messages went over. And she saw, which she, she was upset. And and here's what it was she was upset about. It was not naked. She doesn't care if I get naked pictures from girls. Eh. None of that bothers her. Eh. It, what she didn't know is she's, what she's never seen before outside the pic. I'll show her the pictures if I'm home, you know. Eh. Outside of that, what she's never seen is my responses to the pictures. And it's a hard time. I feel bad to saying this out loud to women that are listening, but it's, I go... I, she goes, you're fawning over them. I go, I know, but I promise you more likely. I'm like, what do you say when someone sends you a picture of their cooch? So I go, but most likely I'm playing video games in the road or watching a movie and the thing goes and I, and it's a picture and I go, no, by the way, I do go, I'm like, oh, nice. And I, but I write back things. I'm like, that is the hottest thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. That is, and so those are the words where it's like the hottest thing. I'm like. Christine, what am I supposed to say to somebody who just, I go, yeah, that's, that's not bad. That's a mediocre vagina you got. Yeah, he goes, that's pretty good. Yeah. Just a fist hey, bump emoji? <laughs> she's like this. You know, she'll <laughs> Pound it out. She'll, she'll be like, respect, respect. Solid crotch, yeah, yeah. bro. 
Yeah. Ah, bush. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just just like it. <laughs> <laughs> the thumbs up yeah. one is the best. No, no comment. <laughs> yeah, that's. But so that she and that we were in a a, a good month long thing. Yeah. Like for that, because also, I also what that did whittle down. It's funny was that I hooked up with that girl. Also, didn't tell her. But I'm oh. telling you, that's not the thing. That wasn't Are it. Are you sure? It was. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I don't know. No, no. Because again, I said she really is. It's not. Okay. I think once you get over the visualization, and I think, do you, do you think the first time to me, because every time so many couples are like, we're going to try this, we're going to try this. And I go, it won't, I think, won't not be weird or uncomfortable until maybe like the third or fourth time the next day when you're doing a ho-hum thing that you guys always do and you see that it didn't change anything in your life. Like you just had sex, that's all. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think you have to kind of get over that. So it wasn't mostly, it was that having sex. And then she said, even that, I think I was writing to her because the girl was like, man, I had a really good time. And I was like, yeah, I mean, you are just out of this world. What a yeah. phenomenal week. And it's just like, she see those words like phenomenal weekend. And I go, it was fine, Christine. Well, what am I supposed to say? You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. You're a little toothy with your BJs, but I mean, besides that, you know. <laughs> Butt was nice. Yeah, one hundred. <laughs> I've had better, but it, but I appreciate it anyway. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah you got no, it. yeah, that was good for Alaska. <laughs> yeah. yeah, E for effort. Yeah, I agree, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> well said, Katie. Does that soften it? Soften what? I don't know. I'm. Just, I, I think I'm we've fine. all learned a lot here today. Yeah, yeah. I, we're, I'm. Yeah, I'm in the same boat I was before this started. <laughs> But now you know you have a friend in the world yeah. <laughs> who understands it. Oh wait, so when I'm in the when I'm in the doghouse, I can text you like, "Hey man, I I, I fucked up again. Like, <laughs> how, how's how you doing? I'm pretty miserable right now. Yeah, I can't yeah. go anywhere. I didn't feel like eating. Yeah, what's uh, up? What's Christine, going on? Christine's pissed off because I just said some girl's got the most perfect asshole I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, what are you going? What's going on with you? <laughs> that would be hard for me to say. Someone's got the nicest asshole. Well, I I, I don't know if I've ever seen it. Katie's in the top, like maybe one of the greatest assholes I've ever seen. Aww. So that's in my head. Is so there a I maintenance or asshole, something? Is there like a bleaching or a maintenance to no, it? No, she doesn't do any of that. Just I mean, asshole. I think you might have done it, but I don't. It's just the. It's always been it. ever since I first saw it. I was like, whoa, the <laughs> butt cheeks and the hole and the whole thing. It's all just like, what is going on? Like Bo Jackson, just a, yeah. just a natural. It's just a chub up every time I. <laughs> She's a multi-sport sex pot. <laughs> yes. She's a Joe Jackson of ass pussy. Oh yeah. Well, it's it really a... has been a great show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What is that? Uh... Jay, you have many, many shows. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, as always, hope you're enjoying our old job. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's really the painfully time slot put. Is killer. <laughs> <laughs> There's like literally no competition. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, we, you know, we're fine, so that worked out. No, oh, don't you worry about yeah. us. We're oh, fine we're over here. Shining. We're fine over here in the den, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> These are more comfortable chairs than Sirius XM has ever had. That's true. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sirius, if you're listening, more <laughs> comfortable chairs, please. <laughs> um, yeah, we get the bonfire five days a week. Legion, Legion of Skanks, Skanks SDR. Uh, SDR show. Can you get tickets to Skank Fest, or did it sell out already? No, the uh, April, I think April tenth, I want to say, is the official uh, sale. The pre-sale already happened, okay. so the the tickets will come back again on April twelfth. Okay, and, and it looks like comedy .com for all my dates. Okay, it looks like I'm Ellis Mania is at Skank Fest again, guys. So hell yeah, I'm excited about that. And you and Lewis's I, first words to each other. You went, I got an email the other day, and Lewis goes, Yeah, of course, man. Like we want you there, we love you. And you go, Do I got to do all three days? And he's like, Yeah. And you go. Ah, oh, Christ. And I was yeah. like, oh, good. They're fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we are. I like him. Of course. You know, yeah. that's why I, I wouldn't have texted him back and apologized if, if I didn't, you know, I feel bad because it was, it was stupid. Yeah. You know? Like it all got wound up into, it's embarrassing. I'm embarrassed about it still. Yeah, it makes good know? fodder. People move on. Yeah, I hope so. They will. But yeah, I, I'll be there. I'm excited to be there. I, li I like being a part of it, you know. It's, oh, it's awesome. Yeah, they always have a good time. All right, thanks for being on the show, dude. Thanks for Thank coming to the house. Appreciate it. Like and uh, subscribe, uh, Patreon, 
Patreon.com slash Alice Mate for a bunch of shows. Michael, are you going to say something? Oh, wait, no. can, I, can I also say my special will be coming out? April, yeah. Uh, uh, April, April 5th. April, April 5th. 5th. Yeah. Alice is 6th and 7th. Yeah. Oh, if, yeah, right after it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to come, I'd love to have you. I'm not you putting you on the can. spot. I you will. Can. Yeah. All right. All right, everybody. See you next week. Don't die.